Inshallah, we will learn some ayats of Surah Al-Alq today. <clears throat> uh, but before that, a uh, couple items that I want to emphasize about is that I added, uh, we, we haven't done some of these in a few days, but I added one more line here that how we make the, the past tense or madhi of the three root letters of the grammar. So the simplest thing is that if you have three fa, an, and lam, so as soon as you put three zabar, three fatas, and pronounce fa'ala, this becomes the grammar of third person past tense. He did. Fa'ala means to do. Fa'ala, written together, this. But if we combine these three letters and add a ta at the end, the grammar becomes different. So ta here, first of all the harakat, when I say harakat, these are the zayr zabar pesh. So fa al, these three should be pronounced fa al. Now this letter ta has two options. If I, if I put a pesh there, fa al tu, this becomes the grammar of I did, first person me and the past tense. But if I put zabar instead of that, this becomes the grammar of you did, one person, past tense, okay? Now, so we, because we have been so far doing all the masculines, we haven't done any feminine, but when we go into some of those, if I, I just want to mention that if I put a sukoon here, or jazam, this becomes the grammar of a feminine, she did. But we don't need to worry about that right now. Okay, so the other thing that is going to be useful today are a distinction between, we did yesterday this, if we have three letters, fa, and, and lam, and we pronounce this way, <clears throat> We put an alif in the beginning. And the harakat is that, as it is written here, if I put a zabar on alif, combined with the fa as af, then put a zabar, af, a, and last letter, I'm always pesh. Af, alu. So this is the grammar of I do, I will do. I am doing all those, they are combined and they're called mudare, means present and future together. Okay, now if I do one different, one thing differently is that I keep these three letters and again put an alif in the beginning, but this time I'm gonna put a zair under the alif, okay? And then sukun is same, this one has a zabar same, but on the last letter, if I put a sukun or a jazam, sukun or jazam means same thing. Now it is pronounced as if al. This has a very different meaning. This is a command, this is an order. You're telling someone do, okay? So very important thing when you're reading the Quran, <clears throat> and if you see a word, three letters word is starting with a zair or with a zabar, the meaning changes. Also, in this case, last letter will carry a page. In this case, last letter will carry a sukun or jazam. So if al is an order, is in a command, is a request, do, okay? So we will be using this today, okay? Now, if you look at these three letters, af, ra, and alif, Para. These are three root letters. The meaning of this is to recite. If you look in the dictionary, the meaning, it will say to recite. Okay. Now, I want to apply this rule on this one. So first thing is that I'm going to put an alif in the beginning with a zair. Second letter has a sukun, so it will be pronounced as iqa. <coughs> Third letter has a zabar. This one, fourth letter has a sukun. 
so the pronunciation will be ikra what is it is a command what's the command i'm telling you recite okay so in this surah prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is being told by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ikra recite okay now this the the scholars say that if you are reading the quran this applies to you if you are the listener or the reader and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command is coming to you iqra you recite okay so that is the first word so when you you write down together it will be written exactly as you see in the surah there iqra recite some people translate read that that's just a matter of understanding now the the reason i picked this ayat today because they are bringing a lot of repetition of what we have learned so far okay so we can practice those things now so first thing the next words are a combination you cannot translate separately four words have to be at least three to four have to be to be translated together first of all the letter starts with the b b means in or with this is a harf e jar okay and we know what harf e jar does it looks at the next noun and changes page to a zer or there are two page two zer so the key characteristics of this b the next word and we know in urdu all these things alif sin mim are the root letters if we make a noun it is ismun okay ismun is a noun and the na- the meaning of this is name okay alif sin mim means to name something to give a name but when you combine this way pronounce ismun always to page at the end this is actually a noun ismun is noun so that word is let's just write down the whole word here ismun then we will combine them and we'll bring the meaning out of those ismun second word is ismun third word has come several times that is rabbun the full word we are writing is a rabbun rabbun is so this is name and rabbun as we say we can translate lord or god or provider or sustainer so just write down one of those <coughs> then the last letter ka is a pronoun and it is used with a zabar and it means you one person and this is a attached pronoun okay attached means it attaches with the previous word okay now as we have been following put an off in between which means you combine the a noun and a pronoun So when you combine it's called the rule of izafa adding one word into other <clears throat> this of will change two page to one <clears throat> but if it's a pronoun pronoun are very hard they cannot be changed so ka will remain ka so final word combination of these two is rabbo ka god of you or your god or your lord okay so that's one now put off in between these two okay so now we have a noun ismun and we have another noun rabbu this time this is now so what this off will do do the same thing we'll remove two dhammas and bring one here so this will become ismo on the second noun it will look at the last letter and page will go to a zer Okay, so when I said dhamma is is a pesh, zair is kasra. So now it became ismo rabbi ka. Okay, now b is a harf e jar. Harf e jar looks at the next noun and says, "I'm going to change this pesh into a zair." Okay. <clears throat> so now, so far this is. Now read this together. When we read, we do not pronounce this alif in between. So we remove this harkat there. Okay, so directly combined. Bismi, Rabbi ka. 
in the name of your Lord, in the name of your God. Recite Iqra with the name or in the name of your Lord or of your God. Okay. So first recipient, Prophet ﷺ is being instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Jibril, recite. Okay. Recite and then instruction coming right after that. Whatever you recite, first say the name of Allah, it's the name of your Lord. Okay. So that is the meaning so far. Now, it is not done yet because the word Allazi is coming after that. What is Allazi? Allazi means it's called Isme Isme Ishara. Okay. It, something points to something. Meaning of this is it or he, okay, one of those. If it is a uh, you know human being or person, then we use the word he. Otherwise, it. So Allazi is it's plural is Allazi. Now it's come a lot of in the Quran. So when the word comes Allazi, that means someone is pointing you to something. Okay. So he. Now. So let's second word. Three letters, khalaqa means to create. When you put three zabars, khalaqa is the grammar here. Faala, he did, he created. Okay. So first meaning is simply he created, past tense. Okay. Now we need to fix a little bit in for the proper English. And importance of that is that if you say, Read in the name of your read in the name of your Lord. He he created. Does not make good English. Okay. So first thing we do, we change this to who. Okay. And because the emphasis being made that it is only your Lord who created, so we put it is in the parenthesis you can say for understanding. Now it makes a very perfect sentence. Read in the name of your Lord with the name. It is he who created. So now we have removed everything else. Only one entity or one being is left, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So khalaqa. If you stop, you say khalaq. But you can continue reading khalaqa. Then in the next ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is um, further explaining and again this is a very important concept that khalaqa is repeating he and he is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created okay now the word insan okay man man okay and the full word is insanun Okay. Put the al before that. Al removes one page at the end, so it become al insanu. Al insanu means the man. The important thing is that when you originally create the word, it always carry two page, and al will make one page. So the full word is al insanu. Okay. Now, as we have been focusing. If I put this word right here after that, okay, and if I leave this the page there, what this page will do, it will remove this he, okay, but we don't want to do that. So what we do, we change this to a zabar. As soon as we change this zabar, the word becomes al insana, but now we have added some information. What is the information? Information is that this being, it cannot do anything. Someone has to work on this. And when somebody works on this, it's called maful or object. When it is a maful, he cannot, this cannot touch this he. He will remain there. Okay. So, khalaq al insana, he created the man. Okay. Important thing is that this zabar has to be there. Otherwise, the meaning will not be as we are looking for. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Khalaq al-insana, he created the man. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying how he created the man. The word is an, lam, and qaf. 
alaqa <coughs> and that's the name of the surah it has couple meanings the meaning is hanging and also it means the clot of blood it also means a leech okay so so we will pick one of those meanings but the noun is alaqun alaqun is a clot of blood or a leech or something which is hanging now min is a harf jar min means from okay min will look at the last two letter a last letter and change to page to two zarb zabars so the word is min alaqin when you stop you pronounce min alaq <clears throat> important thing is that what happens in the when you stop you do not pronounce the sound of noon but it changes into sound of sukoon we say alaq but we don't write alaq we still write this way kari can stop and say alaq what is alaq here <clears throat> khalaq al insana he created the man from something what is that something that something is after the process of creation starts in the womb of the mother the first thing happens that when the the cells start breaking between the sperm and the and the egg it makes a small clot of blood and that clot hangs on the wall of the the womb inside it just doesn't sit there it hangs which is the characteristic of a leech leech is a small animal where that if you put on your hand it will hang like this it will just take its mouth and touch it grab your it and it will hang so this clot of blood is hanging there okay as a leech so allah say that is where the process of the creation allah subhanahu wa taala started khalaq al insana he started the man with or by or from a clot of blood <clears throat> then allah subhanahu said iqra again the same words read recite wa rabbuka and your lord here rabbuka means your lord next word is al akramu so the root letters are kaf ra and mim okay and the word that will say the kareem Quran and Kareem we say all the time. Okay, so two things here. Here I want to point out something to you. Very, it's a new learning now. If I put a ya in in here, in between the second and the third letter, so this word will become ka ri mun. So I added a ya here. the sukun karimun karimun is a being who does the karam to you do the bounty to you to gives you something be nice to you be generous to you many meanings and this letter ya brings the intensity for example alim and lam mim to have knowledge but when you put a ya it brings the intensity of the knowledge alim and alim are different words Alim is someone who has knowledge. Alim is the one who has intensity of the knowledge. Qadir has a ya in there, has the intensity of the qudra. So that's the meaning of when you make by putting a ya in the beginning, in the between. Now we are going to do something different. So it's like a deeply intense yeah. intensity of the action, a lot of knowledge. Okay. So now we are going to do something. instead of doing that we are going to put a alif in the beginning okay and combine these three letters ak ra mo important thing is that we are going to put a the shadda here and zabar there ak ra mo pesh there ak ra mo when we make a word at this wazan at this pattern it brings a superlative degree for example kaf ba and ra this means to be big kabir is the one who is big but if you make this pattern what are we doing here 
we are saying the word akbaru this is the word we repeat all the time actual word is allahu akbaru we stop we say akbar but this is the word what is the meaning the greatest superlative degree hmm? no 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 don't mix with the bab this has nothing to do with the bab this is how to make a superlative degree with three letters we are staying with the three letters i didn't say we are going to four four letters or five letters we are staying with the three letters in those three letters if you make a word by putting a ya in the beginning between these two it becomes uh, kareem or qadir or shaheed all those words they all those words have the intensity of the action but if you make the word is this pattern by putting an alif this alif has nothing to do with anything above there and pronounce akbaro asgharo afzalo asgar afzal all those those are the superlative degree superlative degree means the top one akbar the greatest one okay akramo the one who does the most act of generosity so it's still a noun yeah it's a noun but it's a yeah. superlative in a, in in english we have yeah. good better best right three regular then we have a comparative and a superlative <laughs> arabic we don't have the middle one the only superlative what how it works if you are comparing with two then it says i am better than two but if you are saying i am better than all i am using the superlative so why do i have to use a third best the word best why what is the difference between akram and ikram ikram is the generous generosity it's it's a noun it's a, it's a noun but the act of this doing that but this is the superlative super highest okay so so remember so this word is al akramu al means da so uh, ikra read warabbuka and your lord is who is this time your lord most generous, most generous lord lord of the rahman the rahim one of them is the most generous right there are meanings are but but they are made a different pattern the pattern is the different that we we add a noon at the end okay so but that is not a superlative degree that's just a statement this is the pattern of superlative and it comes a lot in the quran as i mentioned some of those words you will see afzal you will see akram uh, you will see uh, asghar asghar is a superlative is smallest the least one and akbar is the highest one the opposite of that okay so those are the patterns for making the degree superlative degree so here allah subhanahu wa taala is saying that he is the one who is the most on the top okay of doing the act of giving you doing the act of ikram to you okay allazi allazi again we said he is the one it is he is the one okay now we have seen this word now you go to three root letters and lam mim they belong to bab e faala and they mean to know <clears throat> to learn or to know now we go to a bab number 2 in bab number 2 we just put a tashdeed or shadda on the middle letter which means we are repeating the ain two times so it pronounced faala so this will become allama allama means to teach okay now we are in a bab number 2 okay so allama means to teach and also as you mentioned that the name of the bab is the third person grammar keep that in mind so allama as soon as i put this harakat allama means he taught third person past tense so that's what is allazi allama allazi is pointing to rab now okay because whenever you have a pronoun focus where it is pointing to so allazi is he but he is pro- pro- pointing to rab so rab is the one who taught okay taught and obviously he is teaching the mankind 
and this is a word again you can figure out very easily kaf lam mim okay qalamun means the pen qalamun means the pen put al before that it become the pen okay and what al does and removes one page there so what is al qalamu now put a b with a kasra or zair is a harf e jar with harf e jar will look at the last letter will change to zair bil qalami he taught allazi bil qalami with the pen you stop is pronounce bil qalam okay because always last letters harkat changes into sukun except if there are two z zabar it becomes one page one zabar one alif but that's one separate so he taught by the pen now allah subhanahu wa taala is teaching us further allama al insana again notice that allama he taught but again the word is al insana very important no al insano al insana is a mafool okay. work is being done so he taught the man so he will remain there he taught the man now something we did yesterday ain lam mim alama means to know now apply the grammar of this one he and present tense what we do we put a ya in the beginning okay so it will be ya in the beginning and the harakat are ya ala mo alama means to know ya ala mo means he knows okay so this word become ya ala mo okay important thing is that keep that last letter has a page and this the pattern there ya alo meaning is that he knows okay just write down because we are going to change that okay now put lam before that lam does three things just keep in mind lam comes a lot in the quran we did yesterday alam tara kaifa first thing is that it will bring the meaning of not second thing it does it looks at the present tense or future tense word looks at the last letter and says this is a page there i don't like this page i'm going to change this to a sukoon or jazam that lam is doing that okay so now the meaning is lam not and he knows right but lam will do one more thing this is a present tense it will pull into the past tense okay so instead of he knows the meaning will be he did not know he this man did not know so not is there did belong the past tense instead of present tense okay so lam ya alamu he did not know ma is before that ma means whatever or what so he taught the man allama al insana ma lam ya alam whatever he did not know all that he did not know the man allah is saying he taught him this thing la ilm okay now the the after uh, counting so many blessings allah subhanahu wa taala is pointing to the behavior of the mankind first word is ayat number 6 kalla kalla and la these are the two words come in the quran la means not okay but when you put kal before that and la that kalla says ne but no 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 first you have to never no no not never first you have to reject someone is saying and then you reject and say no but this is the truth no 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 name is not okay or but ne 
or nay, but however you say in English. But what you're doing, if I make a statement and you have to reject my statement, so you say, no, 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 no. But this is not what you're saying is the truth. Something else is the truth. So it comes that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that kalla, nay, but, you know, after I have told you all these things, what man is going to do? Innal insana. Okay. This word is coming, has come a couple times, but I want to emphasize one more time. Inna brings the meaning of indeed, surely, without any doubt. Okay. Again, look what inna is doing. The word, original word is al insano. When we create the word first time, it was insano. Last letter had pesh on it. What inna does? Inna again looks at the next word, which is a noun here. Al insa no, and it changes this page to a zabar. That's the characteristics of inna. Whenever you say inna or anna in the Quran, the word after that, this is not harfajar or this is not making any uh, izafa or anything. It just a straightforward tells you that definitely, definitely, indeed, without any doubt, this person now became insana, not insano anymore. Last word. Let's look at the last word. Ta, rain, and ya. <clears throat> okay. How many people know that when the water is flowing in the river, and it yeah. starts crossing the, the, the boundaries of the river. What is it called? Tughyan. Tughyan is crossing the limits, crossing the boundaries. Tagha. Tagha means Tughyan and Ye means transgressing. There are many meanings. Transgressing, being rebellious, crossing all the boundaries or the limits. And water commonly, so as you said, the word Tughyan is used when the water flooding comes from the river and why it happens because the so much water comes the banks of the rivers start flood. what happens when Tughyani, Tughyan comes what happens when Tufan comes these are the words of the same pattern Tughyan when it comes it destroys everything regardless water that was beneficial when it was within the boundaries of the river. As soon as it crosses, the same water will kill the fresh crop ready to be picked up, will drown a child if it is there. It becomes disaster, it becomes rebellious. That's the meaning of this word, okay? Now, put ya in the beginning. And look where the ya is taking you there. This one. Yafu alu. So use the pattern of yafu alu. Put the same harakat. Zabar yafu alu. Okay. Yafu zabar pesh. Okay. The meaning of this will be, he is rebellious. He is transgressor. Because it's a he is, present tense, third person. And who is he? Al-insan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that now, let's fix the, the sound of this word. This, this ya and this pesh, they're mismatch. So, and because they're coming after this sound of ghain which has a zabar so in order to make the same smooth we will pronounce this as a small alif this whole thing because alif has the sound as same as the sound of zabar on the ghain so what became yat gha yat gha means he is rebellious he transgresses the man then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts lam zabar before that. This means surely. This is called lam-e-taqeed. Taqeed means emphasizing. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, first of all, Allah is using the word inna before al-insana. That is bringing the definitely in, indeed. On top of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is adding the word lam taqeed. Taqeed is emphasizing. It's an Urdu word. Taqeed or taqeed. So man is definitely, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, is a, the one who transgresses. And it's a present and future. It's a continuous. So he's transgressing now. He's rebelling now. He will continue rebelling, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So transgressor means here will cross the boundary? Towards... Yes, transgressing is crossing the boundary. Yeah, rebellion, transgressing, crossing the limits, crossing the boundaries. Boundaries set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The limits set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he breaks those. And con it's a constant process, present and future. Not that he does one time, but he's doing now and he will do again and again and again. And emphasis is there twice. Okay, So very powerful statements here after uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned so many greatness and blessings upon the mankind. Allah says in return what the mankind so does. The man to read and all those things blesses and then finally he says indeed man uh, yeah there, if you can see that in the five verses allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling allama bil qalam okay it's the biggest nemat allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of the biggest nemats he has given to mankind that he can write and he can read and he can teach one another uh, now you can say you can type with the computer but the same thing okay. you know, it's not a different than typewriting with the pen then he said, look how I created you, min alaq. Think of how little, a little piece of clot of blood there, hanging there like a leech there, okay? When is being told? When science did not know these facts. Now we know. Very recently we came to know the, the, the whole process of creation. Then when it starts, it becomes a little, you know, when the cells start multiplying, they become a little clot of blood. And it doesn't sit in the, in the womb because if it, is, it just falls down at the bottom, it will be wasted. It hangs like this on the top, so it is secure and safe. And then it continues building up until it becomes a child. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the nature of the mankind, look, who you were, alak, and what you're doing now. And he is not addressing Muslim or Mormon or anyone. Saying man, the man, the, across the board. Everybody does that. And he says, Shallah, we'll stop here.